you heard it right there, Tom. Astronaut Bezos, Astronaut Bezos, Astronaut Wally, Astronaut Damon, and the returning of the booster, the new Shepard booster returning back to Earth, Tom. You see the uh, coming back down to Earth. In about the next 50 seconds, that should be landing, Tom. Captain Radio, it's just absolutely extraordinary. The flames now hitting on the ground. The booster landing here. Uh, I'd love to see where it is in the market. It looks pretty good right now. Uh, John, let's light let the smoke clear before we go back to Emily Chang to be sure. Yeah, we, look at that. Booster touchdown, Tom. It's just, it's just amazing. It's phenomenal, isn't it? It's like parallel parking on Fifth Avenue. Some yeah, can do I, it, I, some look, can. You, know, you and I can't do it. Let's <laughs> confirm that right here for our audience. Emily Chang, let's bring you back into the conversation. <clears throat> The reusable New Shepard booster is back on Earth. Just walk us through what's taking place right now in the capsule. The booster is back on Earth, and as it was coming down, we heard that sonic boom uh, that we knew we would hear if everything was going right. It landed safely the way it was supposed to on the launch pad, and it looks like it's ready to go back up there. John, the key is reusability, bringing that cost down, using these rockets over and over again when that booster landed we heard cheers from the crowd you've got a lot of devoted people employees who have been working here for years watching this and now we are watching that crew capsule float on down those are the drogue parachutes the small parachutes that are used especially for vehicles at very very high velocity they're designed to slow that capsule down as it speeds back towards earth and, and these are the main parachutes we're looking for full inflation here of the main parachutes that will slow the capsule down as it approaches Earth to bring it in for a safe landing. The retro thrust system will kick in, basically pushing out a cloud of air below the capsule, and we expect it to land in a cloud of desert dust. Look at that, it's getting closer and closer to the ground, just 1,600 feet above the ground right now. Uh, you can imagine uh, this is the culmination of a live stream for Jeff Bezos, um, for Wally Funk, as John, you've been talking about, an icon of aviation for Mark Bezos, Jeff Bezos, his brother, and for 18-year-old Oliver Damon. Uh, there you see the crew capsule descending back to Earth. Uh, there are multiple vehicles on the ground in a grid pattern waiting to zoom in as soon as touchdown happens here. Emily, thank you. That capsule, Tom Keen, 800 feet away. That's just amazing to see, and of course the debate of land versus sea 40 and 50, 60 years ago, and now routinely done on land. Let us listen in right now. Touchdown. 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 Tom Keane, that looks successful to me. I don't know about you. Yeah, we'll have to see. I, I believe it is successful. Amazing to me, John, to see the speed at which they seem to be dropping and yet a very gentle landing. The hatch is due to open, Tom, I understand, in the next 10 minutes or so. So we might have to wait a little while to see who comes out of first. The pictures on your screen, though, for our audience worldwide, if you're listening on Bloomberg Radio, the booster successfully touching down. The capsule. So far, at least from what we can see, successfully launching down. I believe you can hear from Jeff Bezos. So let's take a listen. You have a very happy Capcom here as well. Let's do a status check. Astronaut Oliver.
Tom Keen, that looks like a successful mission. The astronauts checked in, the capsule successfully returning to land. That hatch is due to open in five or so minutes' time. Uh, the capsule landing and the triangle of the three parachutes laid out on the Texas desert, or the plains, I guess I would call them, the light green scrub. We say good morning on Bloomberg Radio on television. It's just extraordinary uh, images of a return uh, to space. Chad Anderson with us, and a perfect time to speak to him as Blue Origin is gathered uh, in celebration here. I guess a flawless mission is our first take. What is that signal for Mr. Bezos, for Mr. Musk? What does that signal for Chad Anderson? I mean, they've been flawless since since the beginning. This is their 16th flight, and they've all they've all been flawless. Um, it's really great to see. We now officially have two suborbital vehicles online that are taking humans um, to space. They're going to start doing so regularly. Mm -hmm. We have SpaceX is taking NASA to the space station. They have private missions lined up. Um, uh, you know, later this year, and we have, this is a new era in human space right. flight. Why is NASA focused on the efforts of Mr. Musk and not on those of Mr. Bezos? Well, you know, there's been a lot of comparison between Virgin Galactic and, and Bezos and, and Blue Origin, actually, but the ambitions of Blue Origin are much more aligned with SpaceX. This is the mm -hmm. first step in what they're, you know, much larger ambitions. What has Mr. Musk learned from what we've seen this morning? Well, I think you know he's congr you know he's wished them well, and I'm sure that he's he's happy to see this this um, success happen. It's happened. He's been a, a leader in a lot of in a number of other categories, and Tesla as well. And he's happy to see other electric vehicles coming online. I imagine he's got a similar sentiment here. Um, you know, one company does not make a market, and so it's great right. to see the the increased competition um, driving right. further innovation. Chad, let's go to John Furrow as we see the SUV pull up to the capsule, John. Two vehicles approaching the capsule, one individual running towards it, Tom, just waving at the astronauts inside. They're going to open up that hatch any moment from now, Tom. Any moment now, that hatch will be opened. So many of the memories here, folks, and it's not only Alan Shepard being yanked out of the ocean and Gus Grissom with the capsule uh, going down into the ocean, but it's always an important mission. Now, I would assume, John, that the weightlessness issue here of the shuttle and the space, this space station is not an issue. When you're up for 11 minutes, I mean, what can, go, what can happen? <laughs> Tell me, it certainly goes quickly, that's for sure. I can see Jeff Bezos inside reaching for his cowboy hat, Tom. I think that's going on right now as they go to open up that capsule. We were taking bets on who would exit first. So I'm they, in first. I think Jeff Bezos went in first, so I'm pretty sure that Mr. Yeah. Bezos is going to be first out. Did they come out and say, I'm going to Disneyland? I mean, is that part of the... I don't think this is the Super Bowl, the Tom. Tom, this is not the Super Bowl. <laughs> <laughs> or the way some people have delivered the coverage of this, you'd yeah. expect it to be just as large. It's the what next of this, Tom. It's the what next of this. Well, this was the first time for this company. What next? Craig, let's go. Uh, Chad, let's go. Excuse me. Chad, let's go to you quickly here. What is the next here that you observe? I mean, there's going to be more of these flights. They've got more lined up. And interestingly, I mean, it's going to, see, it's going to be interesting to see where they price this thing, how many people are going. We know that 7,500 people put in bids in this auction, paying up to $28 million. And there was thousands of people who paid, you know, any variation. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And so it'll be interesting to see where they right. end up, how Virgin responds, and yeah. where Blue Origin goes next. John, let's describe the scene for radio here. We've got a mic up like they use for us on Bloomberg Surveillance to make yeah. sure they hear this tone, but uh, <laughs> certainly a different scene than anything I've seen from NASA before, John. I could count one, two, three, four individuals working on opening up that capsule, Tom. It's gonna to take a couple of moments, I think. You can just about see Jeff Bezos inside the capsule waving around and giving a thumbs up as we wait for that to open up. I want to bring in our colleague Emily Chang as we await this moment. Emily, your thoughts on what's developed in the past hour? John, Tom, I mean, we all have covered a lot of stories in our lives. Some of them are more memorable than others. I have to say this is one for the history books. This is, uh, it's hard not to get caught up in the energy and the history of this moment. I mean, it, it's one small step for Jeff Bezos, perhaps one giant leap for uh, space tourism and space exploration. And the vision that Bezos has articulated goes so far beyond just people having a joyride in space. He is talking, has talked about building this road uh, to space, the infrastructure that other entrepreneurs can build on. He's talked about the fact that when he started Amazon, um, you know, he didn't have to start uh, new credit card systems, all of that was in place. We had a mail service that could deliver packages to you. Space, however, is much more a 
undiscovered. Uh, there is no infrastructure. He wants to build that infrastructure so uh, space entrepreneurs of the future can build a whole new generation of, of Amazons out there. And so uh, it'll be interesting to see what he has to say uh, as he steps off this flight and whether or not the experience has changed him or this vision at all. Um, but it, it, you know, obviously this is a suborbital flight. Uh, Blue Origin working on orbital flights with the new Glenn. Uh, that will be their next big project. Uh, we spoke to a lead designer who said they're on track for that to be done uh, before the end of next year. So who knows? Jeff Bezos could be up there again on an orbital flight. I believe that hatch door is about to open any moment now to see who comes out of that capsule first. The astronauts inside are standing up. They're standing up, Tom, as we await that door to open, perhaps in the next couple of seconds. They're going to descend down, uh, uh, John, and you know, it's going to be a great moment. The stairs, John, frankly, look like the ones we have for the Gulf Stream. The hatch door has opened to the capsule, Tom. Exiting first is Jeff Bezos donning that cowboy hat that he's been wearing over the last week or so, Tom. After him, the first teenager, the first human flight, the youngest ever astronaut there, Tom. And there you go. So we keep talking about this moment. For the 82-year-old aviation icon, just phenomenal. And his brother, the last out of the capsule.